welcome back to Nikki's Scrapbooking Adventures. Today, I thought we would focus on using our photo size guides to scrapbook. So I have these photos here of my two birds, Azel and Ollie, with my family. Now, I'm choosing to do a one page layout and I can do this because there's a lot of empty space in my photos. The things that are important are the people's faces and the birds. Look at my grandpa, he is trying to whistle to them, so cute. And then I have this other large sized photo. Today I am focusing on this sketch by Creative Scrapper where we've got a huge block of paper here, a strip in the back, and then five square photos on the right hand side. As long as I pick the right size for the photos, I should be able to get my four by six here on this. The collection that I'm going to be using today is uh, based on Simple Stories, Little Princess. So I put this collection together based on the colors in this paper and the colors that are prominent throughout this collection. So this, like for example, this paper is not a part of the Simple Stories Little Princess. However, the colors match. And this is actually one of the focal pieces that I'm going to be using today because it has all of the birds on it. I specifically sought this out. So in my collection, I already have pieces that coordinate together because that's how I made them. And I'll scoot this over so you can see both sides of the paper. So this is an example of a page that has a great back side and has all of the colors on it, but then has very motify pages. Again, the cut aparts from the Little Princess. So a lot of this is going to be the Little Princess collection, but I purposely picked it for the colors that are there. Um, so I pulled in things like this mermaid paper and then this dragon paper from other companies because the colors coordinate so well. And you can do this with any paper that you have in your stash slash inventory. And I do have duplicates of certain papers. So for example, this is a duplicate because I really, really, really like the back side on this. It's one of my favorite pieces and I love the other side too. And then I have some coordinating, coordinating colored cardstock as well. So let's jump in to figuring out the sizes using our photo size guides that we created last time. So let me get, there is that. So in my sketch, I've got five or four square photos on the left hand side. I think I can squeeze that into five because I have one, two, three, four, five photos and then my four by six as well. So I need to think here for a second. Two and a half or three. If I do three, so I'm going to try to get two and a half in. Okay. So two and a half works for this one because my black outline. Two and a half works for this one because it gets my grandpa's head and the birds in. Now it does not work for this one. However, I already have the same person in this photo and I'll be getting two and a half. So I think that's okay that I just kind of cut it off real close. What about two and a half works for this photo and then two and a half ooh, might have to go to three let's see so there's three 
three, 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 and then three. So I'm going to cut them down to three for now and then see if I can use my two and a half by two and a half. Let's see here. If I do four by four on this one, I still get all of the birds in. I can even scoot it over. No, I think I'd want to center them. Just like that. It's kind of fun looking back at these old photos because you see old cars that you've had. This was my baby Colby. I miss her. Okay. So let's break out the trimmer and go to three by three size. Okay, so I've got my trimmer here and we're going to trim down a couple of these photos so you can see why these photo size guides are awesome. So I'm gonna put this right here. Doesn't matter what orientation because this is clear. I can slip this right in here for my starting point to see what, where I wanna start cutting. So there is my three starting and I can flip it over and I know that my grandpa's face is going to be straight in the middle. And then I know I want the top of his head not cut off. So there is my three by three photo size. Again, what's great is I can choose where I start my cut. And in this case, I'm going to start right here using my photo size guide, moving it out of the way. And I really only need it for that initial cut because I know how big my photo size guide is. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back in here. And I'm going to center his face right where I want to cut. Okay. There's one cut, and then I can rotate it to do my third cut. This is why I really, really, highly, highly, highly suggest making your own photo size guides. Okay, so I'm going to try to get his face in there as much as possible. Putting my photo in there, running it up against the side of my photo size guide, and then I'm going to move it out of the way so I don't accidentally cut it. Rotating my picture and doing the same thing for everything. So I'm okay with getting rid of that white space, that blank space, and then three. I have two more photos, so I'm going to just come back with that completed in just a moment. Cut everything down, and I decided to go with four photos because this person is in there twice, and it balances then between on the head or on the hand, which I thought was kind of fun. So just kind of going by a rough estimate here, because my sketch does not have exact measurements, I need to determine what I want this width to be. So according to the sketch, it doesn't quite go all the way. So if I use my T-square ruler to determine the width, and it looks like it's probably going to be four inches. Okay. So I need a four inch strip. And then this is probably going to be a 10 by, I'm going to say eight, 10 by eight. I have my 10, my piece of paper that's going to be my 10 by eight here. So let's just see where that cuts me off. Oh, that's perfect. Now, the reason I say that's perfect is because the top here has the leaves going across, and I wanted that same pattern to be across the bottom. You know, I may do eight and a quarter. Nope. 
because I don't want any birds to be in. So I'm gonna go eight. That's perfect. Okay. And then I'm gonna do 10, making sure, again, seeing the sides there. Let's see where that ends. Let's do that about there. So I'm gonna go 10 and a quarter. Let's see where that is. That's pretty good. Again, I have my sides there. Perfect. So that is my block of paper. Now I need to find the strip of paper. I think I'm gonna go with this piece of paper here because my photos have that light blue color in my bird's wings. So that pops, makes it pop. So before I said this is gonna be a four inch strip. So and this way there's four inches put that right there i think what i'm going to actually do is fake it so i want this to be wider so i can see the birds so i'm going to cut this here because i know this will be underneath my paper here and you can do this all the time if you wanted to you don't have to waste all that paper okay so I'm gonna scoot that over and then make this like that there we go so now I can see a little bit more I may even scoot that over of the birds Yep, I'm gonna go all the way solid across so I can see the birds on the right hand side because the focus is on the birds in this instance. Okay, so this is my four by six photo. Okay, and then I have my three by threes here. Looking at my sketch. Looking at my sketch, I'm going to plop these here. Let's see. That was what that looks like. So I'm happy where my base page is. I'm happy with my photo placement. So at this time, during my normal scrapbooking, I would adhere using my ATG gun and my T-square ruler to make sure everything is straight. So I'm going to pause and do that. Get my photos down. Ooh, am I going to mat my photos? Let's see. Do I want to mat? No. And the reason I don't want to mat is because they pop off my page already. And if I were to mat, it would make these photos bigger and I would cover up more of the images that I don't want to do. So I will be back with my photos adhered and my base page is adhered. So I've got my pictures adhered. I have these ones really adhered down, but my other photos just have a strip of ATG because I knew I was going to be tucking and layering some things underneath. I figured out my title and it's going to be flock and then together down here. So let's work on getting this adhered. Now you can see I most likely will need to use some adhesive on the back of these. Like these are not going to stick well. They're old and that's okay. So I'm just going to put my title down here using my T-square ruler for right now. You know, I don't even need my T-square. These are not sticking whatsoever. So, we're just gonna stick that there. Thought I'd have a little bit of fun with this title using 
follow the colors that you see in the background papers. And then we got a little itty bitty birdie here from that little princess collection. And then we've got another birdie right here. So it kind of brings my titles together, even though they are not in line with each other. So I'm just going to kind of place them there. When I do adhere these, I will use my T-square ruler. Okay. So we flock together like birds of a feather, right? That's kind of what I was going for. I was going to do birds of a feather, however, my outfits did not work like that. Okay, so now I'm going to work on embellishing this half of my layout. And I, you notice that I have several spots where I can stick and tuck things. So I've got a couple pieces here from the ephemera pack. I even included some cute little butterflies. I thought the flying effect kind of pulled stuff together. Then I'm going to put this big, big floral right here to kind of cover some of that gap, making sure that my bird is visible. And then I'm going to stick this guy right in here to fill that area. And then what I'll do is I'm going to put the date, 2013, right on top of those florals. So I've got my funky letters in a visual triangle. And then I'm going to have kind of a day and a design right here going down. So then I'm going to stick this like that. And then this guy or girl or whatever you want to call it is going to go just like that to cover up that image. And that is my page. It's very simply embellished, which I like because my birds are part of my embellishments and I love the paper. What I'll end up doing is I will use my scotch tacky glue to get the four corners down. I'll also use it for some of these items. I'm thinking about popping these up on a little bit of foam. So I will pull that out and make my birds pop a little bit. Now these birds are not the same style as the ones on my background paper, but that's okay. That's what makes them pop out and makes these florals make more sense because these are not the same style florals as in the background paper. I hope you enjoyed this video talking about using our photo size guides that we created in the last video and using those to create a page. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.